I thought that this was, up until the knockout defeat, a brilliant performance by Michael Conlon. I thought he boxed out of his skin. The only criticism or the main criticism I could give for his performance was that he maybe got a little excited after the knockdown at the end of the first round and expended a bit too much energy, which left him depleted in the later rounds where Lee Wood was able to come on strong. But other than that, I mean, he barely put a foot wrong in the whole fight. His upper body movement was fantastic. His footwork was fantastic. Great hand speed, accuracy, punch variety, going from head to body. In the first round, for example, the way he set the left hand up, he was dipping to his left and then firing left hands to the body. And so this, how can I explain it? It accentuates the feeling in the opponent's head and the opponent's mind that you're going to throw a body shot because not only are you throwing the shots to the body, you're also dipping low. So he thinks he's spotted a pattern. Okay, he's dipping low and then he's firing a shot to the body. You see, you're conditioning him to think you're going to go low. And then at the end of the round, he switched it upstairs, landed on Lee Wood's chin and he went down like a ton of bricks. I mean, that was a heavy knockdown. I think he even hit his head on the canvas on the way down. Devastating knockdown. And Michael Conlon's not even known as a big puncher, but it was early in the fight. I guess Lee Wood hadn't warmed up to taking the shots and it was just so accurate and precise. It was just a beautifully delivered punch by Michael Conlon. And as I say, in the second round, he came out looking to finish it and Lee Wood was on unsteady legs. I mean, he showed tremendous heart and physical strength actually to tie Michael Conlon up and get through those moments. And that is one thing you did notice, at least I noticed from early on in the fight, is although there was a huge skill gap, <laughs> a huge gap in ability and technique between the two, Lee Wood looked like the physically stronger man to me, even early on. He looked like the bigger man, not just the physically stronger man. You could see that early and obviously tremendous heart, but he was getting tattooed. He was getting lit up like a Christmas tree. Michael Conlon was hitting him with check right hooks as well. <laughs> Another shot he was hitting him with. Body I mean, every punch in the arsenal that you could think of, he hit Lee Wood with it. <laughs> and he did it with flair and pizzazz. It was a really good performance. And I've seen some uh, curiously close scorecards. That's all I can say. I think people get caught up in the excitement of the event. Personally, I didn't think the fight was in any way close. I think Tony Bellew actually had it close going into the final round. I had, I think, uh, uh, Michael Conlon five rounds up going into the final round. So Lee Wood absolutely needed a knockout to win. I, I didn't think the fight was remotely close at all. I think there were rounds where Lee Wood came back a bit. But if you watch closely, Conlon was still landing all the better shots in most of those rounds. I gave one of the rounds, I think it might have been the six, the six or the seventh to Lee Wood. And even when I gave him that round, I was like, that's touch and go, you know. <laughs> that's actually a touch and go round that you could have just as easily scored to Michael Conlon because he was doing some nice stuff in there, landing counters and body shots and what have you. So I thought it was a brilliant boxing performance by Conlon. He really, you know, stepped up to the plate. But then in the, I want to say eighth, ninth, tenth rounds, uh, of course the 11th, Conlon started to slow up a bit. And that's where Lee Wood started to come into it more, landing his body shots. He started pinning Michael Conlon on the ropes. I think it was the 10th round where Conlon started to actually look ragged. And you're thinking, wow, because Conlon started swinging wildly. You know, he'd been throwing his punches with great form and holding a shape together so well throughout the fight. But then around the, I want to say the 10th round, he started, you know, swinging wild shots. I was like, okay, he's getting tired because that's what tends to happen. People lose their shape as they get tired in a fight. And Lee Wood, I mean, yes, we can talk about his heart, his toughness and so on, but he had to have a lot left in the tank because he really didn't get the opportunity to throw much at Michael Conlon because Conlon was just tattooing him the whole fight. He was just beating the brakes off him. So Lee Wood did have a lot left but because of the fact that he didn't get the opportunity to actually throw much of his arm. Oh, he threw and missed, but it wasn't a massively high work rate from uh, Lee Wood through the first, oh, I don't know, eight, nine rounds because he just couldn't get into positions to be able to let, that, let the shots go. He was too busy trying to not get hit with that left hand, which he got hit with repeatedly time and time again. It got to the point where it felt like Michael Conlon couldn't miss with the shot. And Lee Wood stands very upright. He doesn't have that nice fluid upper body movement that Michael Conlon has. Wood's very upright and Ben Davison just kept telling him, look, you've either got to get low under the left hand or you've got to block it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> keep that right hand up, do something. Don't just keep getting hit with the same shot over and over again. And he did make a couple of adjustments 
and Conlon was falling short. Actually, I think Lee Wood was taking a step back when he noticed Conlon throwing the shot. And obviously, as Conlon slows down, it's easier for Lee Wood to read what he's doing. So yeah, going into the 10th round, I think it was the 10th where Conlon started slowing up a bit and Wood managed to pin him on the ropes. There were some vicious exchanges. The longer the fight went on, they were trading up in the middle of the ring and it was very exciting for the fans. Then in the 11th, again, vicious exchanges, but finally, Lee Wood actually got the better of an exchange because as Carl Frotch, and I'm so glad that Carl Frotch was commentating on this fight because, you know, me, I'm not a particular, particularly big fan of the DAZN commentary team. I think it was uh, good to have Carl Frotch on board. Obviously, Lee Wood being from Nottingham, Carl Frotch from Nottingham, it makes sense that they would have a, a, Nottingham, their guy, a Nottingham guy there commentating. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, Carl Frotch and it might have also been uh, Darren Barker who mentioned during the fight that in the exchanges, even when Lee Wood seems to be doing well, Conlon ends up having the last word time and time again. But in that 11th round, uh, Lee Wood had the final word and he dropped Michael Conlon with a left hand. And when I first saw it, I think most people or a lot of people felt that it was a slip when you first saw it initially. But watching it on replay, it was actually a clean shot. It was a left hand and Michael Conlon went down. He didn't seem desperately hurt or anything like that, but the punch caused the slip basically, you know, so you have to count it as a knockdown. And that was the breakthrough moment, you know, <laughs> right at the, the last breath. Uh, he goes into the 12th round, comes out, starts sticking it on. Conlon actually tried to stick it on Lee Wood, but Wood fired back. He managed to stun Conlon with a shot. And then as he backed him up to the ropes, Conlon put his head forward you know, and down and Lee Wood hit him with a right, which seemed to land high on his head. And I've seen several angles of this now. The zone didn't show a slow motion replay, at least at the time of recording this video, they still haven't shown a slow motion replay. But there are several angles shot by people on their mobile phones at ringside that you can watch on YouTube. So have a look and you'll find them. And on one of them, you can clearly see that Lee Wood lands a right hook to Michael Conlon's head and that knocks him out cold, absolutely out cold. And there's a, a, a one or two follow-up shots and Michael Conlon falls out of the head, uh, falls, out of head falls out of the ring head first backwards, which is very dangerous, okay? Bad enough you're knocked out cold. But to be knocked out cold and then falling out of the ring head first, backwards? I mean, nightmare scenario. Apparently, his brother or somebody else th uh, that was there did actually break his fall, so he didn't hit his head on the floor when he fell out. And hopefully that's the case, because again, that's why you worry. It's, it's not just the fact he got knocked out, it's the fact that he could have hit his head, already being unconscious, hit his head on the ground when he fell out the ring. So apparently he, he uh, came to while he was on the floor. But of course, the uh, medical team and everything wanted to be extra sure. So they didn't let him get up. And that's obviously the right procedure. They gave him oxygen and so on. They took him to hospital. And uh, yeah, Lee Wood wins in dramatic fashion, retaining his title. He really is a bit of a Cinderella man, Lee Wood. He's one of these guys who doesn't have the greatest talent, uh, doesn't have the kind of glittering background that Michael Conlon has. But what he is, is a very, very determined, tough physically strong, hard punching man who will not be denied. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the performance, about the fight. The atmosphere was great. It's just a shame really that Conlon fell out the ring and was knocked out cold the way that he was because you would have liked to have seen Lee would be able to celebrate in the ring after the fight rather than have to hold back his celebrations and all that. If Conlon had just been, you know, dropped, but was still conscious and still in the ring, and then he managed to get to his feet, but not quite make the 10 count or the referee waved it off. Then they could have, you know, both been in the middle of the ring and the referee holds Lee Wood's hand up and Conlon gives a pulse fight. That would have been a better scenario because of course, then people can celebrate properly and Lee Wood, etc., can enjoy the victory. But as it was, worrying times, worrying moments for Michael Conlon, hopefully he's okay. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below.